the wheel. Thank y'all for tuning in. Um, I have a verse in the book of James tonight. Um, I asked the Lord for some guidance to give me a word tonight. Um, I can always depend on the Lord. I can always depend on what he'll give me. Um, he sees my frailty. He sees my weakness. He sees my inability. He sees my tiredness. Um, he knows me better than anybody. Uh, but he's still willing to let me come and open up my Bible and let him show me where he wants me to read. Um, I turned over here at random and I picked the verse that I'm going to do at random. I actually had to back up one verse to get the verse in context. But the verse is a very uh, easy to be explained verse. But I'm in verse number five of James chapter one. It says this, James five or James chapter one and verse five. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. If any of you, if I ask for wisdom, there's only one that I could ask to give me wisdom, and that is God. Um, he's telling us here, If any of you, well, first of all, here's what you got to have to be able to ask God for wisdom. You have to know God in spirit and in truth. You have to be aware of who God is. God has to be your heavenly father for him to show you anything about the scripture and about the Bible, um, you can't go to some stranger and let them adopt you and they feel that they would just take you under their arms and make you one of their family. But when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, he makes you his child. You were his child then. So when it says in verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Let him ask of God. See, God is the God of all wisdom. All wisdom comes from God. If I want more wisdom, I have to go to the one who has wisdom to give me. Not only does he say that there in that verse, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally. You know, I'm going to say something that might sound sort of crazy, but, you know, I didn't know that God was a liberal. But I learned something tonight. He is very liberal with wisdom. He is very liberal with wisdom. Now, he's not wis he's not liberal like we think of the liberal party of the government party of today. I will assure you, he is not liberal far as politics in this world today. If anything, I think that he has to sit up there and shake his head. 
and wonder. And he probably even says, I want you to look at them bunch of idiots. I hate to say it. I mean, I don't, I don't like to make fun and to make jokes, but honestly, I do not see how he can tolerate certain people. I mean, I just can't, I, I can't, I can't see how he does it. I know it's got to be love, a love that I will never understand, but for him to tolerate the things that he has to tolerate, but he says here that he giveth to all men liberally. He doesn't, it doesn't say here he gives to all men conservatively. Conservatively would mean that he would only give a little bit, but he gives a lot when he's liberal. You know, I've got some pots that's got some squash in them pots, and I had a little bit of a cold snap a week or so back, and it took a few of the little plants out. But for some reason, the two ends on the both ends of the row seem to have survived and made it to the point that they're almost ready to bloom. They're nice, pretty, and green, and healthy. But I went and I planted them pots that didn't have much in them, but I put more than one or two seed in them little pots. And now I've got like two or three plants in them pots. And the point that I'm trying to make is when they all begin to start growing, a few of them is going to be left behind because they're going to be shaded out. They're going to be in competition with each other to which one is going to get the sun more than the others. And some of them plants is not going to make it. So right now, I'm letting them all grow to make sure that I give everyone a sporting chance. And then when I notice that one plant seems to be doing exceptionally well, I'm going to have to jerk out the smaller one to give it room so that that pretty plant will grow. I don't want to do that yet until later on. See, I pr planted them pots liberally, probably more than I should have. But I'm going to have a crop out of them pots because I planted a little bit liberal more than maybe I should have. So what is he saying right here? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. I had to look up that word upbraideth. And it means to find fault. So it says here, and upbraideth not. God is not in the business to beat you over the head with a stick. He's not in business to upbraid, which is to find fault. He's going to let me allow them plants to grow until I know that there's a dominant plant and the others is going to have to be yanked up or replanted somewhere else for them to make it. So I'm just sort of letting them buy time right now. See, this word upbraideth means to find fault. He doesn't want to find fault because it says upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Talking about if I ask for wisdom, it shall be given to me if I ask for wisdom. But in verse number six, but let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. You know, when you waver, that means you sort of walk like a drunk. You waver where you don't hold on to the side. When I go out of this room tonight, I have a set of steps 
that I go down. I've got my light on outside. I leave that light on till I get flat footed on the ground. And then I'll turn that light off because I know where I'm going to get out of this room. But I wait and leave that light on until I get flat footed so that I don't fall. So, and I hold on to the door as I go out because there's times that I might get woozy headed. There might be times when I might lose my balance now and then. He says here in this verse, but let him, the one that has a lack of wisdom, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. See, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. See, faith is something that you can't see. I've often compared faith to my, to my breath, to my oxygen. I want my oxygen right here in front of my nose. I want it right here in this section right here so that when I get ready to breathe, I've got a access to oxygen right here in front of me. And faith is the same way. See, we don't see the evidence of faith, but it goes on to say, but let him ask in faith. It's talking about if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, meaning in abundance. God is a God of abundance. You know, when you come out here and you pray and you ask God for a message, God's going to give me a message in abundance. When I started this message, I asked him, I said, Lord, let me use something in the New Testament and let me use something in the Old Testament. And I know where I was going to turn in the Old Testament. But here's the thing. I've already got it marked because it was almost like it made sense to be able to use it. See, he's saying right here to us, for he that wavereth, see, he doesn't want us to use wavering faith. Wavering faith is sort of being pushed around. It's sort of being knocked around. It's not with a level foot, like I need a level foot getting out this door tonight. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. You know, when you're in the sea and you're wavering with the punch of the water, sometimes the wave could be so big that it could literally knock you over. It will cause you to lose footing and you might even slide eight or ten foot before you feel the gravity of the dirt on your knees where you can find yourself where you can get up and stand to your feet. And what he's saying here is tonight, he says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. See, whatever's wavering in me is going to weaken my wisdom that I need from him because it says, any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Meaning God's got plenty of wisdom. He's got a warehouse full of wisdom and he's willing to give it because he is a liberal that's not always a bad thing when you need something from God. If you needed something from God, being a liberal is not a bad thing. God knows what we have need of. He knows what you have need of. He knows what I have need of. So he says here, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. He didn't go and say, ask a religion. He didn't go ask of, of church membership. He didn't go say 
anything about asking to pay tithes. There's nothing wrong with any of that. But he says here, you ask of God that give it to all men liberally. Meaning he's got plenty of wisdom to give and upbraideth not. Meaning that he doesn't find fault in you. Now he's going to see fault. If there's fault there, he'll see the fault. But he's not the kind that's wanting to beat you up with a stick. He's saying here, and it shall be given him. Talking about wisdom. Wisdom to understand the Bible. Wisdom to read the Bible. Wisdom to understand the scripture and what the scripture is saying. That's what he's talking about here. That's the reason he goes into the next verse. But let him ask in faith. If I ask in faith of the wisdom that I need, is he going to give me what I need? Yeah, because he says he's a liberal and he gives me what I have need of. You know, it's amazing how the liberal party of our government is the only ones that wants to spend my money and your money. They want to make all the money. They want to embezzle all the money, but they take my money and they take your money to be able to have their little holiday adventures with, spending trillions here and trillions there like they've got a tree of money. Yeah, they got a tree of money. You see in the tree of money. That's not what he's talking about right here. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. But there was a man in the Old Testament that asked. And if you want to mark it down, I'm not going to read the verse. I'm going to tell you where it is. If you go to First Chronicles chapter number 4 and verse 10. First Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 10. This is the prayer of Jabez. There's only one, one verse. And I'm going to read you the last part of the verse. Now, to give you a little context, Jabez called on the God of Israel, meaning he asked, just like what we said in that other verse. He called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. Here's what I want. I want you to bless me indeed. You know what he asked the Lord? Enlarge my coast, that thine hand might be with me, that thou wouldest keep me from evil that it may not grieve me. You want to hear the answer to what God told the man? Now, some people is going to go and say, well, wait a minute, Brother Ken. That means this man here asked for a lot of the carnal things of life. Well, let's see what he asked. Oh, that thou would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast meaning maybe he could have wanted a little more acreage that thine hand might be with me. The hand of blessing might be with him. And that thou wouldest keep me from evil. You know, you know, it sounds to me like this man Jabez had a relationship with God. that it may not grieve me. Talking about the blessings and the enlarged coast and the blessings that he would receive from God. And you know what God did at the end of the verse? And God granted him that which he requested. I don't see where Jabez begged and pleaded and begged and pleaded. He simply asked. 
You think that might be what the Lord might want us to do? He might just want us to ask. You know, every time I come out here, I have no clue of the message. I always wait until I come out, hoping that the Lord will give me something that I can be able to talk about. Not just simply just find something to run off at the mouth. I just hope that he gives me something when I put him in the front and let him see that I'm willing to talk about him in some fashion, in some way. And he gives me a word because somebody here in this verse in James said the question, if you lack wisdom, let you ask of God. That's what Jabez did. Jabez asked to enlarge my coast, keep me from evil, allow your hand to be with me, and God granted what he asked for. You know, God is no different today. If he did it back then for Jabez, do you think he would do it for you? He's waiting on you to have that same relationship that Jabez had with the Lord. Jabez evidently knew the Lord. He knew him in salvation. He believed on him. He had a relationship with him. You know, I've come to realize that my relationship with the Lord is the most valuable thing that I have. I don't have anything more valuable than that relationship with the Lord. Elderly Ministry is the website here. You're welcome to go to that website and pull it down. There's a phone number that you can reach me on. If you're interested in wanting to know how to be saved, I would find it a honor and a privilege of you to call me. There's a phone number on that website that you can call me. You can also go to YouTube directly. If that's easier for you, you can reach me on YouTube. It's got my email link there. It's got my phone number there on YouTube. And this is the YouTube channel that you can go there to, to YouTube and look for the phone number. You might have to do a little digging. But if you're used to YouTube, you can reach me there on this channel right here. I would love the opportunity to talk with you and show you how you can know that you can be born again. If you want this relationship that is involved with real wisdom, the wisdom that I talked about tonight, then you need Jesus. You're not going to get nothing but the truth, when you call and ask me to talk with you, I'll open my Bible and I will pray and we will let you understand what the Bible means about salvation. I'd love to help you. You need to leave a message when you call. I stress that because I get junk calls all the time. I probably got 15 today. You need to leave a message when you call, and I will be more than willing to call you back. But do your part and leave a message. Let me know you want to talk, and I'll be glad to return your call, okay? Thank y'all for tuning in tonight.